Hello, Wealthy Wives and Friends. This is Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying Rich Men. Hang on one second. I need to move my mic. There we go. How are you doing, my Wealthy Wives and Friends? Let's go ahead and do our mantra. I am a wealthy wife. I am a wealthy wife. And I am a wealthy wife. Now take a deep breath with me. Breathing in. And let it go. Very good. Today I actually want to talk about something I was discussing with a client of mine this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were going over, she's coming, has come to me to work with me in reference to learning how to be, which, which most career women have this issue, learning how to be less in that competitive, masculine energy that so many women have to be in when they're working careers and working in the corporate world. Because, like I guess, guys, I work the corporate world. I know. There's a certain level of energy that has some masculine edges to it that you do need depending on the type of work that you do. And the kind of work that she's involved in is very scientific, very, um, very intellectual, very brainiac kind of stuff. And the men that she's dealing with, because you know, she works in the medical field, you know, she's dealing with some very aggressive, very alpha male types that, you know, think their shit doesn't stink, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so she deals with men that are really in that space of almost I have a God, almost have a God complex because of the type of work that they do. Now, she's no slouch herself. She is highly educated. You know, she has done her grunt work and, you know, she has herself in a very beautiful position in reference to her career. And she was noticing that the men that she's been dating and so many of you that are career women and are successful, meaning making your money, doing your thing, holding your own, probably have this, have had the same issue. She was dating men that really were not compatible for her. She was dating men that were not very ambitious. She was dating men that she almost had to take, well, she, for the most part, she had to take care of. You know, she was settling, but she didn't realize she was settling until one day something had happened in her life. And I'm not going to go into details, nobody's business. But once again, I'm sharing this because this is a story for so many career women that are having this issue. She finally realized that, you know what, she was tired of it. She was tired of dealing with situations with people and men that just were not compatible for her particular needs because she finally realized she wants to be in a relationship with a man who is going to be somebody that can actually up-level her and they can come together and become a really great power couple. Meaning they both work together very well. You know, they both have you know mutual ambitions. They can support each other's individual dreams, but it's really something that's great. A man who will honor her and appreciate her and cherish her as a woman. Not just as a competitor and not just as a partner, you know, like a potential business partner. And we were talking and I was telling her, you know, in reference to conversations, she's going to have to learn how to have different conversations, different types of conversations. Because here's a deal, deal career ladies. So many of you go in there once again because it's you're wired this way. Thinking that when you go meet a man that you got to show him that you're competent and you're capable and you can compete with him at his level. Okay, that's all well and good in reference to dealing in the corporate world, perhaps, or whatever, you know, type of career you have or business you have. But when it comes to the romantic side of your life, you cannot do that. It is totally inappropriate. And think about it. Do you really want to keep putting on that warrior gear every time you walk out your door? Wouldn't it be nice to go on dates? Hang on one second. It's crazy. Stop. Um, wouldn't it be nice to go on a date, you know, and actually be in that feminine space to able to catch your breath and relax and, you know, allow yourself to shine from the point of being a woman. Not a woman who has to prove herself to men, but a woman who actually understands how to be a woman. That's going to be through your conversation, how you look, how you dress, how you smell, how you carry yourself. And most of it comes down to conversation because so many of you know how to dress the part of a woman. You do. Hair done, nail done, nails done. Oh, stop. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. I, you know, I had to laugh. I, you know, I, I told you guys I changed the spot that I do, you know, my recordings and everything, in my, uh, my place that I use as my as my studio, and my cat now has access to me. So unfortunately, when I decide to record video, sometimes he's awake, and he thinks it's time to play. So as I'm talking to all of you, I'm being attacked by the, the crazy cat. You know, he wants to play and chew on me, and you know, make sure I'm paying attention to him. So I apologize if you hear me, you know, fussing. So that's your disclaimer for now. 
because he's wide awake. But anyway, we're talking about the conversation. Because like I said, you guys know how to do the part. The nails are done, the hair is done, the dress is pretty, you smell great. You know, you guys do the packaging really well. But it's the conversation. And it's learning how to identify who it is you're looking for. Because I've told her, I go, have you ever really sat down and thought about the type of man that you want to be with? And for the most part, most of you, she's like, no, not really. She goes, I just know I don't want who I've been with, who I've been with previously. Okay, that's a start. And we were talking and she said something to me that really stood out in my mind. She said, we were talking, because we were talking about some, some research I have we're currently doing. We were starting to work on the scripts for her conversations now when she actually goes out on dates or she's doing any kind of networking or socializing. And she says, she goes, this is really hard. She goes, this is really work. She goes, I didn't realize I had to change so much in reference to dating affluent men. I go, that's interesting. I go, you know what? Well, why do you say that? I go, because I hear that from clients and I hear that from women I talk to in general. She goes, because I go, because for me, I go, I really don't get it. Probably because I've been at this for so long and I know that you have to have different languaging. You have to present yourself differently if you're going to be spending time with men with money, rich men, wealthy men, affluent men, however you want to call it. They have a different way of being. They experience life in a totally different way. Part of it is privilege. Part of it is the fact that so many of them have worked their asses off to get to the level of success that they're sitting at, so they don't really have a lot of time for dumb stuff. They just don't. You know, they want, like I said, they want to be with a woman who actually they feel good with, they can relax with. You know, they want to be able to show you off and do things for you and, and do things to make your life easier if you're in the position that's making them feel good and then where they can actually relax. So she was saying, she goes, wow, she goes, really taking the time out to do the research and learning how to change her languaging. Because we're talking about how she can actually, because she says one of her biggest challenges was is once she tells people what she does for a living, uh, men run. Because I kid you not, her career is like fun, phenomenal. I mean, seriously, what she does is just incredible. And it's really something that you were not going to find a ton of women, women doing. So I believe her when she says that. When she tells me what she does or tells me what she does, they kind of look at her going, oh, shit. Because they're thinking, one, she's too smart for them or they're not enough for her. They, they, they talk themselves out of her. And I told her, well, you know what? You never want to diminish yourself because she's earned her position. She's earned, you know, the greatness that she has in her career. She works hard for what she's done and for what she does. I told her, we just have to learn how to word it differently. I go, and plus, until you really get to know somebody, they don't need to know what you do for a living. Not to the great fine point details of it. It's none of their business. So anyway, so I asked her, I go, but that's interesting you're saying that. I go, explain to me. She goes, well, here's the thing. She goes, here's where women like me are coming from. When we look at you and say, this is a lot of work. Why do I have to do this? She goes, we're thinking, I date. I know how to date. I go out. I meet men. I've been in relationships. You know, I know, how, I know I'm pretty. I know I'm smart. I know I'm this. I know I'm that. So why do I have to change? Or why do I have to speak different? Why, why do I have to do anything different? I know how to attract men. I've been dating men. She goes, but, she goes, here's what happens. She goes, since I've been talking to you, she goes, and you're showing me things, and I'm learning different things, and I'm, I'm understanding it. She goes, she goes, I finally get it. She goes, it is the mindset. She goes, it's really understanding how to think the way an affluent person thinks how a rich or wealthy man thinks the things that interest him the things that you know understanding his 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 schedule his 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 thoughts his his how he is how he exists how he actually perceives life she goes it's the mindset she goes so i'm understanding why learning how to do my research start learning about these men even if she's not going to meet a particular man in general if she has a particular type there are going to be men that her type of man is going to admire so start researching the men that you think your potential man is going to admire you know then once again you know and i, I explained her we were going into details out of what she should do in reference to co um, doing her research and how do you know to really get into that point so that she really can be in a better space of understanding the headspace, thought processes, and hot buttons, so to speak, for her chosen affluent men. And she got me thinking because, you know what, I, I kid you not, I mean, I'm incredibly good at what I do. And I can say that in all authenticity and with all the confidence in the world because I know how much time and energy I devote to what I'm doing. Like I said, I live this lifestyle. These are the men that I date. And I know the research I've done over many years to be competent in what I'm doing. And I also understand, you know, what I want and see for all of you. 
you know, that are going to work with me privately or through my programs. So like I said, so for me, this is my life. You know, this is not just, you know, I'm not just randomly doing this. I'm not trying to find somebody for short term gain. I do this for my life. This is how I live. And so sometimes I may get tunnel vision on certain things because I know what needs to be done. I know how things need, how you need to show up. And I go deeper because, I mean, there's a lot of good general information out there, guys. There really is. Somebody sent me some uh, links the other day to some programs that seem very interesting. And, you know, the women that are doing them, you know, I applaud them. But I am not looking here to give you guys just general information. There's a ton of general information out there. I'm here to teach you specifics. I am here to show you how to do what you need to do step by step. And we're going to learn how to base it upon your personality. So... Like I said, this is tutoring. This is not just coaching. This is tutoring. You know, this is personal. And like I said, so I, so I, should, so I, I, you know, I had to, had to sit back and, and think for a second. And I told her, I go, thank you. I go, because you offer me some clarity. Because I, there are times I do have to sit back and go, why are they not getting it? You know, why don't they understand why this is so important? Is it tedious? Yes. Is it work? Yes. Does it take discipline? Hell yeah. It does. You know, it's more than just, like I said, you change in your body, be that lose weight, modify, whatever. It's more than just the clothing that you wear. It's more than just, you know, you showing up being cute, being pretty, being smart, being whatever. It's so much more. Because once again, you're dealing with another human being. So it is about your personality, about your presence, about positioning, it's about location, it's about conversation skills. Conversation skills are the number one thing you guys need to know. I have to laugh and I mean it makes it tickles me sometimes because women keep saying, you know, where do I go to meet these men? What do I need to do? And it's like, you guys, I don't care where you go. I could I could do this. I could put you in a place where I know for a fact there are going to be a shitload of affluent men, really wealthy men. I could drop you off there. You could be look your best, smell your best, be cute as hell, whatever it is that you need to be. And if you do not know how to carry a conversation with a man, they will be attracted to your looks initially. They may be attracted to the fragrance of your skin, your hair, whatever. They will think you are just like, wow, she's beautiful. But if they're talking to you and they're with you for five, ten minutes and there's nothing that sparks them, I mean, nothing that holds their interest, they're going to look at you and they're going to look around the room and they're going to peace out. Now, some of them may even ask you out on a date because now they're curious about what's underneath the hood, so to speak. But if you really don't have anything to talk about that's going to add any type of interest to his life, he's just not going to be interested. So communication skills are extremely important. So is the research. So as she and her are talking and we're working, and I give my clients assignments. They always have like two or three things they must do for me and get back to me before like two days before their, you know, their, their um, phone call, their weekly phone calls with me. Because here's the thing. I don't want to do the work for you. I can give you the steps. I will definitely give you the tools you need. I am definitely here as a reference point. I do things for my clients. Like I said, the very first scripts, you know, that was where I write, that I, how my clients do I have them give me a basic idea of how they see themselves. They send it to me. I look over it. And then I send back a script. Based upon what they've said, I clean it up, take things out, drop the extra stuff, add my spin to it, and I present them with an actual script. And I may write two or three or four scripts for my clients sometimes to help them get going depending on how long they're with me in reference to the time that we're coaching together. But... Working with me is hands-on. What's the point of me tutoring you, working with you, if you're not going to take the skill sets that you're learning and really understand how to utilize them? You can read a book, definitely. I've read lots of books. I've read tons of books. You know, information that I've used and learned over the years, I've gotten from books, as well as real-life experience. But there is nothing like having a chance to talk to somebody that can hear you and help guide you, and help clean up, you know, you know, loose, um, loose ends, help, help tie up loose ends, help smooth out rough edges. That's what private tutoring is about. And like I said, you guys will get some of that when you do you know, like the online courses with me. Because you'll see me because of the videos. You'll see what I'm doing. You'll hear what I'm doing. And you can rewatch the videos, obviously, and re-listen to the audios. So it's a little different than when you're just putting information out there and getting the general population to answer your questions for you. While it may spark you, it's not going to really help you unless a person sits down and takes time out with you. 
And I got news for you guys. Some women are going to be willing to do it for you, definitely. Most are not because guess what? It's time consuming. It takes time because they didn't learn by just, you know, random people doing stuff for them. They had to get out there and learn the process themselves too. So I was so glad that she told me that because it made such sense. Women just assume because they're good enough for the type of men or quality men they've been dating before, they decided to start dating wealthy men or rich men. They assume that the rich, the richer man, the rich man, the wealthy man, the affluent man should be okay with whatever she's bringing to the table because every other man she's met prior to him, she has been good enough for him. But you guys got to remember, you've just been dating average people. And once I am not throwing shade at the average, you know, like I said, not everybody is going to be a wealthy person. Not everybody is willing to do the work and put in the effort and go through the pain and the discipline and the process that it requires to be a successful person. I appreciate that. I respect that. All right. It is not easy when you finally decide to follow your dreams and make things happen. You're going to get yourself knocked on the ground. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. It's not an easy road. But it's a worthwhile one. I can tell you that for sure. But remember, if you think you're going to just bring yourself as you are, and that's all you're bringing to the table, and now you're going to try to put yourself into a class of men that understand education, self-education, that understand a wealthy mindset, that understand being fearless, that know what it takes to, to, to sacrifice, that know what it takes to do all these things that they've had to do to become successful. And some of them are still hurting in the process because it is so hard and it can be very lonely. And that's one of the reasons why they tend to run in their own circles because the people that they're affiliating with understand the process. They understand their sacrifice. They understand the pain and they can understand it and they know how to celebrate with them when it's time to celebrate. So if you're coming from a mindset where you're just accustomed to doing the ordinary average things or cutting corners or taking the easy way out or not or just doing just enough to get by. Well, come on, guys. You know you do it. Think about your job. How much effort do you have? If you don't love your work, you know you're going to go in there and do the minimal amount of stuff you've got to do to get that paycheck every two weeks. I know. I used to, I, I worked, I worked for other people. You know, the last job I had, I mean, I, I gave it my best shot. But trust me, I wasn't doing overtime if I didn't have to. Seriously, I wasn't. And I used to laugh because I'd walk out the door at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. I think it was 6 o'clock we got out of work. And they would look at me sometimes like, where are you going? I go, at 6 o'clock. I go, I'm not, I told you this week. I go, I'm not doing overtime. I go, I give you all my effort that I, and I did. I made a point because I, I have had my own business. And I think it's insulting when people are not giving me their best effort when I'm handing out a paycheck to them. Remember, like I said, I've been an, I've been an employer and I've been an employee. And I like when people understand how to honor that space. So, but, I, but I've been there, I guess I've been there. I, you know, I get there to work in the morning and, you know, for the first half an hour, people are standing around the break room doing whatever they're supposed to be doing as opposed to being on the phones, doing what they're supposed to do in reference to work. Come on, guys. You know you do it. Not all of you. Some of you might be dedicated to your jobs. But most people are not going to put a lot of effort in because they hate what they're doing. So they're doing good to get out of bed in the morning. Why do you think people can't wait to get to Friday and then moan and groan come Sunday night? Now see, if that is your mindset, if that is how you think about life and your, and, and your life and whatever's going on, guess what? You can't expect to date a truly affluent man and be happy with him. Because he's not going to want to settle. He's not going to. He's going to be somebody who's going to be putting in those 12 hours, 16 hour days. Sometimes 20 hour days based upon what he needs to get done to handle his business. He is that, going to be that person that is going to be trying to find things to make things better. He is going to have structure in his life. Now, once again, I'm not saying all of them do. Humans are humans. But the really successful ones, they have their process. They have their things that they love and they count on to keep their world spinning correctly. So once again, when they're ready to meet a woman and, and, and date and be with somebody that they want to pour their time into, they want to pour their money into, they want to pour themselves into, they're looking for somebody who will honor and appreciate their effort because they will have no problems honoring and appreciating your effort. But you got to make an effort. You know, they have no problem up level. If you don't come from a wealthy background, it is not going to be issue in reference to you up leveling your life and dating a fluent man. Because here's the one thing I know about affluent people. 
If you've met somebody that you honestly believe because they're showing you that they're willing to do the work, that they're showing you that they're willing to make themselves better and that they're willing to listen to your guidance and that they're willing to invest in themselves and they're willing to do things that need to be done to get them moving towards their next level, then they'll gladly assist you. You know, people say, oh, they're selfish. No, they're not. They're really not. They just don't waste their time with people that they know are going to, that want to waste their time. Time is a priceless, priceless unit, energy unit that we have, and we never get back. Once it passes, it's gone. You guys get that in your heads, please. It's gone. It's one thing to waste your own time, but you're not going to be able to sit around there and waste somebody else's time. Not an affluent man's. Or an affluent person for that, be it a man or a woman. So like I said, so that, so this is what I'm talking about. So if you are looking to date affluent men and you honestly are struggling, you can't understand why you're not making strides or you're getting mad because you see other people making strides and you're thinking, well, my God, you know, she's she's like me. Why is she doing better? I'm still sitting here not having, having great success. Probably because she really has a focused effort and she really has learned how to put together some kind of strategy to get her to point B, C, D, E, F, G. And you're still just kind of throwing things out there to the masses and hoping for the best. You're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to take the time out to really learn. And eventually there's going to come a point in time when you're finally tired of having small gains. And you may even have moments when you have big gains, but they're not lasting gains. And that's when you're going to understand that you're going to need to find help, real assistance, real hands-on assistance. So if you have come to that point in your process, if you have really come to the point that you understand that you know what you really want to do with fluent dating, you really want to get out there and be in front of affluent men. And I'm not talking just to run, because I told you guys, I, you know, I meet wealthy men. I, I, I came to South Florida specifically for that reason. So I know where to find them. I know the activities where they, I go where they go. And you've got to do that. You have to go where they are. And you're going to spend some money. I told you guys in other videos and audios I've done that I do spend money on events that I go to. And some of the events I go to, they're not cheap. But you know why they're not cheap? Because they don't want just anybody there. They want people there that are going to be sharing the same headspace. And that they can just relax with them and be themselves. And that will rest on my saying in some corner judging them. Oh, I can't believe you spent that money in that car. You know, do you understand a million dollars for a car? Oh my God, what's wrong with you? You could have taken that money and, you know, help, help hungry children in America. Or fed. You know what I'm saying? I see the stuff that goes on, on, you know, in these comment sections when people post stuff that, you know, like somebody will post a car or, or post something, some extravagant something that they purchased. And I'll see the, because I read the comments every now and then, just not in depth because for the most part I can care less. But sometimes I just go through stuff because it just, it entertains me. But I, I see that when I'm listening to these people fuss about this thinking, okay, one, you don't know what this person is doing because most really wealthy people and affluent people have charities they devote their money to. So many of them have their own foundations where they are giving away money and they give away great sums of money. Tons of money is given away through charity, courtesy of wealthy people. And the person that's fussing, you know, the first thing I want to say to them is this, who have you donated money to? What charities do you support? You know, because usually their comeback's going to be, why can't you? I'm living paycheck to paycheck. And why are you fussing? Because even when I didn't have a lot of money, even when I, I was starting to do a little better in my job, my career, because I had been in the position where I had to go receive help. I told you guys, I had to go to Salvation for two, two Christmases when my kids were small. I had to go to the Salvation Army because I had lost my job and I didn't have money to feed us for Christmas or buy their Christmas presents. You guys, that is demoralizing as a parent. When you're sitting there looking around thinking, how am I going to buy my baby's Christmas gifts? I had no money at the time I wasn't dating anybody. And nobody was available to help me. So I had literally had a ghost sit in that line, go get in line, and sit all there all day, get my little number, and wait to be seen by somebody to set my family up to receive something for Christmas. So when I started doing better, I would take my kids, I told you guys this in a prior audio video, that we have that tree. You guys know, I'm sure you all see it throughout the country, at the mall where they have a Christmas tree up where they put the names of families, of needy families. There's usually a, a thing on there to purchase things for an adult as well as for the children. And when I got when I was making a little more money, I would take my kids to the mall because we do our Christmas shopping and we would go over to the tree. 
And first, I told my kids we're going to pick out one family because it's all I could afford to offer money for was just one family. But that's what we did. And then eventually got better. We would pick out four, four families. So each of my kids would pick out a family and I'd pick out a family. And we would go out and buy the gifts. And we would go, you know, supply, put together a gift certificate so the mother could go to the store and buy food to feed her. Damn, I'm going to cry. Mm. Excuse me. Wow. But so that mother could actually go to the store and buy food to feed her family on Christmas Day. So sometimes I see people making these comments about what they think rich people should be doing with their money when they're not doing anything themselves to assist somebody who is less fortunate. I really want to say, shut up. Because you don't know what these people are doing, may or may not be doing. Because so many of them don't broadcast to the public what they're doing. They're showing off the fun stuff because you know what, it's just fun to show it off sometimes. But that's what I'm saying. So if your headspace is not going to line up to be in the same process and thinking the way affluent people think, then you may be struggling with, and dating affluent men. You may be running across men that are just inappropriate. Because you haven't learned how to identify the truly quality, the true quality men. Or you may not be putting that energy, you're out there, and you're not putting out the right energy to attract quality men. Because you may have hesitations and you may have preconceived notions and you may have prejudice when it comes to wealthy people. So I want you guys to think about what I'm saying because like I said, so think about it. And that comes from the fact, like you said, you've been thinking, like I said, like my client said, she was thinking initially that why did she have to change? Because what she was doing, she was attracting men. She was dating. You know what I'm saying? She, it's not that she could attract men, but she understood that by changing her speech, by changing just the essence of how she presents herself and how she just learns how to relax back into being a woman and really enjoying and cherishing the beautiful things about her that are so feminine and, and funny and just so gorgeous. When she finally understood that she needs to take off that warrior gear and allow her set sit in that space of womanhood. And to learn how to define that in a way that speaks to her heart too. Like I said, guys, this is something really, really special. It is so special. It's like I said, well, I'm so passionate about this. You know, so if you guys have been listening to me for a while and you're thinking that you would want to do this. I mean, seriously want to be involved in dating a fluent man. And like I said, you know, I guys, I understand sometimes money can't be an issue. I get that. I've been there been there done that good god of course but some of you can afford to take the time out to invest in tutoring for yourself you can afford to do some uh, something extra to get you closer to having what you want but you hesitate ask yourself why because if you keep going after doing the same things you're doing you keep trying to get things for free if you keep trying to receive and not really put your energy and effort behind doing what you need to do on a deeper and higher grade level, you're going to stay frustrated. And you know what? I, I, I really, really dislike seeing you guys frustrated when I know there's something that you really want to do. But I know there's something I can do to help you because I can only give you the tools to get you there. You have to have the desire to want to use the tools and then put the energy and work behind it as well as the investment behind it to make it happen. I speak from experience. I told you guys, I'm always learning. You know, I'm talking to one of my business partners right now. You know, she and I are starting to set up the events we're going to go to. There's going to be a couple of events that we want to go to together because she's one of the few people I actually can take with me to go places and do things, you know, in the realm of the ultra wealthy, what they call them, ultra high net worth people because she's an ultra high net worth person. Um, because I told you guys, I normally go by myself. It's rare that I take anybody with me to functions that I go to at that level. Just because I don't want to babysit people. I don't. Now, it would be different if I'm taking, because I'll be doing some luxury events for clients, you know, for luxury events, yes, yeah, part of a wealthy wife. Now, that's different. That's going to still be a tutoring session, and the women that come down here to spend that time with me, that's different. You know, that's going to be something that's going to be like a, a, a learning experience that's going to be hands on you know, tutoring and working it, and me having a chance to watch them while they're out there doing their thing, making sure that they are thriving and that they are doing well, you know, in the environments that I'm going to bring them into. Now, that's different. But if it's just me out there doing my thing, 
you know, working on my next level, I generally go by myself. So I know that it's work. I know that it takes effort because I'm still doing it myself. But if you really are tired of just not getting what you want, if you've tried other stuff, because I know some of you have. Like I said, there's good information out there. I'm not, I don't debate that at all. There are some people doing some really cool stuff. Like I said, but they don't teach what I teach. And they don't teach it the way I teach it. Just like I don't teach what they teach. I told you guys, wealthy wife is a lifestyle. Wealthy wife is about learning how to bring women together to build up. Not only themselves, but their families and to create legacy. As well as learn how to understand to stay in that space of generational wealth. Either by themselves in partnership with men or to affluent men or in marriages to affluent men. I want you guys to understand how to think like the wealthy think. And I know there are very, very few people that are going to teach you guys how to do that. They're going to teach you how to meet them. They're going to teach you how to hang out with them. They're going to teach you how to dress to attract them. They're going to teach you lots of things. Useful things, definitely. But most of them are not going to teach you what I teach you. Because I teach specifically to date wealthy men. I'm not teaching you guys how to date the population. You know how to do that already. You want to up level. And that's what I'm here for. So once again, so if you're tired of just being tired, if you're tired of banging your head up against the wall, if you really, really, really want, or if you're out there dating a fluent man and you're having some success, but you want to take yourself next level because you're thinking there's got to be more. Because there's different levels to affluent dating, obviously. There's different goals and visions with affluent dating. So maybe what you're doing has been working for you, but now you want to change over to something different? Contact me. You know, like I said, the Wealthy Web Consultation is for us to get to know each other to see if working with me privately is going to be a good fit for you and for me. I'm not kidding, guys. Like I said, the matchmaking is coming. Like I said, I'm, I'm working on details of what actually speak. I want, <coughs> excuse me, oh, excuse me, try to cough and sneeze at the same time, it doesn't work. I want to have my tribe of women ready so that when I'm ready to open the doors for the million, for the matchmaking, that I have a good, solid group of women to introduce to the men that I'll be cultivating as well. And I've told you guys before, not every, and it's going to women who have access to what I have access to have to come through me. Now, some of you may disagree with that, and that's entirely up to you. But you know what? I put too much energy and effort into what I do just to throw it out into the wind. It's not happening, guys. That is not how I function in this world. I put too much blood, sweat, and tears into this. But if you're with me and we're growing together and you're and you're and I'm helping you to grow into the woman that you know you truly are meant to be and it's a team effort cuz when you're with me it is a partnership it is you and me and eventually you'll be meeting other women as well like i said you are the wealthy wife you guys are my legacy so if you want to find out how to really become part of that legacy and get yourself started contact me if you're not quite ready, you don't think you're ready for private coaching, go ahead and enroll. Like I said, I've got two courses over the Online Academy. The one on communications, you guys, I don't care if you want to do a fluent dating or not. It'll, it'll benefit you in your career, learning how to actually have conversations with people. It'll benefit your careers and just interacting with people on a regular basis. And take yourself to the next level. So if you're ready, click on the button. I'm going to put the button up for the consultation. I'm going to put the button up for the, um, the uh, Mastering the Verbal Artist Induction. The art, of verbal, uh, the art of verbal seduction. Like I said, guys, if you want to be in the world of affluence, if you want to be and understand the headspace of affluent men, education, 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 self-education, they live for it. Warren Buffett still goes to events. Jeff Bezos still goes to events. They have private coaches. Warren Buffett still works with people. He still loves expanding his knowledge base because as things are changing in the investment world, he wants to know. And there are younger people coming up that have skill sets he doesn't have, that he's learning. So until we talk again, once again, this is Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage, Ma'am. If you got the book, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hugs and kisses. Make sure you email me to get those uh, so you can get your free gift audio, your gift audios. If you haven't purchased your copy, get your copy of Wealthy Wife. It truly can change your life. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.